instead of going like this way, way, way away from the barrel. And then that horse dives in and drops and hits the barrel. Nice run, Valen. Alan Taylor. As always, makes an incredible entrance. First in a bar at the age of 13. Then she broke her neck. She overcame all that. Valen's now world champ. World champion. Congratulations. She knew that she could do whatever she set her mind to. What's up, Lomies? Welcome back to my channel. You guys, today is a super highly requested video. This is a video basically for everybody, even if you're not a barrel racer. The top 10 mistakes that beginner barrel racers make, I am so excited to bring them to you because just like everybody you've ever seen at the top, we've all been terrible at this. Anytime that you start something new or you're a beginner at anything, I feel like people fail to recognize the fact that you're gonna suck for a long time. You're probably gonna suck really bad. And I feel like we need to normalize that a little bit more and let people know that that's just part of that process. So I'm gonna get into this. If you've done any of these things, if you're doing any of these things right now, just know it's okay. Every single person is a beginner at anything new that they try, and we're all always learning. If we're not learning, we're regressing. So if you learn something new today, that's amazing. If you can recognize a few of these things and can help someone else, that's amazing. But every single time that we are a beginner or we're dealing with a beginner, we need to learn to be incredibly kind and incredibly wonderful to those people because they're already in the middle of a struggle with trying to figure out this next level. They're already in the middle of self-doubt and trying to figure out how to put all the pieces together. So make sure whether it's you or someone else that you're being super kind when pointing out a beginner's mistakes. So with that said, let's get into the top 10 beginner barrel racer mistakes. Number 10 is what I basically talked about a little bit before, and that is that every single person is a beginner. So the number 10 biggest barrel racing mistake is not giving yourself enough time to master something. I love reading the book called Mastery by Robert Greene or the book 10,000 Hours. Understanding that it's gonna take a long time for you to be really good at anything is the number 10 mistake. I think that what people do is tend to not give themselves a proper amount of time to learn to do something and then they end up failing, quitting, burning out, or just altogether feeling really terrible about themselves. So number 10, give yourself a break. It's gonna take a lot of time to learn this. I've been doing this for decades. It's gonna take a long time to make it look easy. So the number 10 one, give yourself a break. Okay, the number nine barrel racing mistake is not entering soon enough. So on top of giving yourself a deadline on being, you know, not so good, the number nine thing is go ahead and enter. It's better for you to get in the routine of entering and going and starting to show and understanding that failure is a part of the process than to wait and hold off on entering where it's gonna end up that you are delaying that process and all you know how to do is exhibition. So for you, I hope that number nine, you will start to enter. If the very least all you do is hook up your truck and trailer, put your horse in and drive to a local event, that's good enough. So number nine is not starting soon enough. Number eight is improper equipment. So in the Barrel Racer Handbook, I don't know who started this. Basically, people go get a saddle from Amazon or eBay that just says Barrel Racer Saddle, and then typically somebody hands them a Tom Thumb bit. A Tom Thumb bit looks like this. I don't know who does this or who is passing these out, but that bit makes everything so much harder. Um, it doesn't, so the shanks, the way the shanks are, hits your horse's mouth a different way. It's not great for teaching lateral flexion to help your horse turn. Um, it's not got a super great set of brakes on it. Just all around, this is my least favorite bit. Um, you can come for me, but if you've ever been to a top level barrel race, you're never gonna see a Tom Thumb bit and there's a reason. So you can say my horse loves it or my horse does great in it or da 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 da. And if you tell me your goal sheet, I'm gonna tell you, you've never seen one of those bits at that level. So we can argue this forever. If you've done this longer than me, by all means, come for me on the Tom Thumb. But I think every person that's achieved some level of success is like, say it for the people in the back. Now, do I love cheap saddles? Yes. 
Um, do I think getting saddles off Amazon or eBay or anything else is a bad thing? Absolutely not. In fact, I've purchased my own eBay saddles. However, I feel like when you learn a little bit more about barrel racing, you learn that the fit of the saddle is gonna help you so much. So buying a saddle that's 20 years old, that has a really amazing tree that's made by like Coates or Ammerman or Double J or some other brand that is really well known in the barrel racing community is really gonna help you. Some of these cheaper brands that put out saddles um, that are just not put together very well. In fact, I bought a few just to see what they would do for an experiment for a YouTube video. We couldn't even put it out because the stirrups fell off when I went to get on. So. Beware of having the new shiny stuff that maybe isn't going to help you in the long run. Have something that's just really, really old that you can take really great care of that's meant for you to sit in and ride in. It will change your riding forever. Number seven is not treating yourself like the athlete that you treat your horse. This is the biggest one. If you are wanting to find more balance in the saddle and more timing and better hand-eye coordination, you've got to do a lot of work off the horse. That's why we're in the gym five or six days a week. It's very, very important that you are finding yourself to invest not only when you're on your horse, but when you're off your horse as well. So that's number seven, which kind of correlates to number six. Number six is writing down your goals. What is your purpose for riding this horse? What is your purpose for wanting to enter a barrel race? What is your big reason why? I can highly recommend a book called Start With Why. It's gonna help you so, so much to have kind of a plan as to where you wanna go so you're not just saddling your horse every day and getting super frustrated. Number five, this is one I see all of the time. I don't know why I, this is kind of innate in us when we first get on a horse. But the number five biggest beginner barrel racing mistake is pulling like this. So getting to a barrel, tipping over, and then pulling way down or flipping the wrist over as you turn. I see this as being the biggest mistake, having your horse and then pulling straight down. What it ends up doing, again, always reference the very, very, very top, top, top elitist in the sport so that you can check and see if they're doing similar to what you're doing. It's a really easy kind of an accountability check or a mirror of like, do I look just like that? If you don't, you wanna make sure and check on something. But when you pull down, the way that the bit is made is that if you pull down, it's gonna put pressure down. The way a horse can release the pressure is by either going up or coming down. Most of us on beginner barrel horses are not on a horse that's broke enough to instantly drop into the pressure of the bit. So you're probably gonna have this horse that comes way up and your turn is gonna be super wide, super ugly, and not at all what you're looking for. Number four, biggest mistake, reins being way too long. Typically I see beginner barrel racers with reins this long and our agility and timing is the biggest part of the sport. That means getting your hand placement correct, sliding your hand down at the barrel, being able to be really agile, pushing back up to the next barrel, sliding your hands down and switching direction. It's not easy for a beginner barrel racer. So in the beginning, having your reins a lot shorter than just how they come standard is super important because you're actually gonna be able to utilize and get to the right spot to give the proper command to your equine athlete. Number three proper saddle fitting. So this kind of goes back to one of our later numbers, but number three is making sure that your stirrups fit well. So for me, I always look at how my, my legs are naturally, and I want to make my stirrup ride on the ball of my foot. I don't want to be back here. One thing that I always ask people is, if you play sports, which way are you more athletic? Like this or like this? So if you're a beginner, putting the weight of the stirrup on the ball of your foot and having a little bend in your knees is gonna help you a lot. Typically, I find that when people's booties are doing this in the saddle, you can see that they're reaching for their stirrups way out in front of them and they're having a really hard time. So that is a really big deal, getting that proper fit so your legs are underneath you and you can utilize that pressure to have a much smoother ride. The number two biggest beginner mistake is making excuses and not being super accountable. It's my life's journey to be as accountable as I can possibly be for every single mistake that happens. So instead of running to a new bit, a new saddle, a vet clinic, or a supplement, I would rather that we look right in the mirror and say, what could we do better on and off of the horse in order to make ourselves an all around better barrel racer? So the number two biggest mistake is 
blame. So make sure to have accountability. Typically, I can find every single issue with my animal right in the mirror. I can ask myself, did I dedicate enough time to this? Did I set aside enough time to read and study about this? Did I study at least an hour a week on the arena that I was going to practice at? Um, did I prepare for a win through visualization, meditation, and setting a proper goal? Did I do all of those things? If I didn't, then I need to blame myself first, not my animal, my vet, my shoer, or anyone else. Okay, time for the number one biggest mistake that beginner barrel racers make. Here it is. Basically, and Cody calls this the Hail Mary. All of us are taught in the barrel racer handbook, once we get past the Tom Thumb is the fix all bit, we get the, when you get to a barrel, go like this. Well, the minute that you cross over your horse's mane here, you've lost all of your leverage on the reins. So when you're here, your horse can dive in and hit a barrel. But typically our bodies look like this and then we crash barrels. So the number one biggest mistake is not riding all the way to the barrel, keeping your shoulders and your hips square and your hands square in front of them instead of going like this way, way, way away from the barrel and then that horse dives in and drops and hits the barrel. You find people are super frustrated. You find that they start whipping in place of this, whipping at the same time. I've done it myself. That's why I can talk about it. The biggest mistake is just getting to a barrel and thinking you can accelerate through kicking and whipping and then do this at the last minute and having your horse drop in laterally. It's happened to all of us. That's why I can, I can pick on it and talk about it. I still do it from time to time. I don't know why our knee-jerk reaction when you're about to hit a barrel is to do this. All of us do it and we all try to be better every single day. The fix really quickly is to square up your shoulders to the barrel instead of being like this. Square these up, square these up, square these up and get straight up into your spot asking for acceleration keeping your body a little bit more forward than normal instead of stepping into this inside stirrup and doing this and looking down your shoulder where inevitably at some point you're going to really really regret this and your knee is going to hurt super bad you guys i hope that you loved this vlog i absolutely love giving you guys this information until next time, you guys, make sure you're subscribed, ding that notification bell, and as always, don't forget to count your blessings, drink your protein, and say thank you to Jesus. See you at the next one. Congratulations.